Good evening. Today we celebrate Trinity Sunday. We celebrate three persons and one God, a creating and loving parent, a father, the incarnate one who came to earth in the person of Jesus our Savior, the human face of God, and a God whose gentle and fiery spirit gathers us this day, calling us into relationship, unity, and communion. We welcome all who join in us with us in prayer via live stream. Allow yourself to enter into this time through listening, singing, and praying. Whenever and wherever we gather, may we always recognize, recognize Jesus in our midst. Let us stand and reach out with a word of welcome to those around us. Our entrance hymn is at number 566, O God Almighty Father, number 566. My friends, we gather as a community of faith and we bless ourselves together in the name of the Trinity, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My friends, as we come together today, let us pause and look into our hearts and seek God's forgiveness and God's mercy, especially for those times when we failed to share and live by the Trinitarian love of God, the Son, and the Spirit. Lord Jesus, you are the eternal Son of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you come in word and in sacrament to save your people. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you sent your Holy Spirit to bring light and peace to the world. 
Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, your name is veiled in mystery, yet we dare to call you Father. Your Son was begotten before all ages, yet is born among us in time. Your Holy Spirit fills the whole creation yet is poured forth now into our hearts because you have made us and loved us and called us by name. Draw us more deeply into your divine life that we may glorify you right through your Son in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Thus says the wisdom of God. The Lord possessed me, the beginning of his ways, the forerunner of his prodigies of long ago. From of old I was poured forth, at the first, before the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains or springs of water, before the mountains were settled into place, before the hills, I was brought forth. While as yet the earth and the fields were not made, nor the first clods of the world. When the Lord established the heavens, I was there. When he marked out the vault over the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he fixed fast the foundations of the earth, when he set for the sea its limit, so that the waters should not transgress his command. Then I was beside him as his craftsman, and I was his delight day by day, playing before him all the while, playing on the surface of his earth, and I found delight 
in the human race. The word of the Lord. Number 1088. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we even boast of our afflictions, knowing that affliction produces endurance, and endurance proven character, and proven character hope. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The word of the Lord.
My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the Spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> My dear friends, I wonder what comes to your mind when we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Trinity. The word that comes to my mind is, it's the mystery. Today's Feast of the Holy Trinity often presented as, presented as a mystery, but a mystery not so much that needs to be solved, but as a trinity of persons who share their very life with us. So we are dealing here, my friends, not just with some terribly abstract doctrine, still less a mathematical contradiction that says three equals one. It says that one God manifests in three distinct persons. You know, people from all walks of life, <clears throat> since the dawn of creation, have tried to understand God. They have tried to understand the mind of God. How does God actually work? But none of us can say the last word about God because there is always more to discover. There is always more to experience when it comes to God. So every year, Trinity Sunday invites us to reflect on the life of God. It invites us to enter into a relationship with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We all know, my friends, especially those of your parents, that infants are made to be cared for. They are born into a relationship of love, which is inherently personal. It is not just their personal development, but their very survival depends upon maintaining the relationship they depend on for their existence. So if you think about it, all the habits, infants form, and, they, and the skills that they acquire fall within the framework of a personal relationship. Therefore, human experience is, in principle, shared experience. None of us exists on our own. The essence of human being is to be in relationship to the other. Several years ago, there was a movie called There Were Times, Dear, starring Joanne Woodward. The movie tells the story of a woman 
who had to cope with his husband's progressive Alzheimer's disease. The film shows her watching him as he becomes more and more lost. She watches him become a dazed and drooling invalid. She worries when she wakes up in the morning and he is missing, and she doesn't know where he is. But she doesn't keep her distance. She stays with him. She cares for him. She feeds him. She bathes him, and dresses him. And she does all this in the knowledge that not only will he never be the same again, but there will come a time when he will not even know who she is. Yet he, she has. Absolutely no thought of leaving him or staying away. Now, what does this story tell us? What it tells us, dear friends, is its testimony to every human being's greatest drive, every human being's greatest urge, and greatest need, which is union. That is. Togetherness. To put it simply, to be whole, people need union. To be people, to be whole, people need relationships, and that is self-evident. Let's think for a moment. The most satisfying moments or times in our lives. I'm sure such moments were when we sat on our mother's or father's lap, when we were held and hugged. It was when we were loved and cared for, and affirmed. When we were simply in the silent presence of someone who loved us. But by the same token, think of the worst moments. Of our lives, perhaps they were the times when we felt rejected, when we felt cut off from family and friends, times when we felt betrayed by a friend, times when we felt isolated. The bottom line, my friends, is this: that we human beings are in desperate need. For togetherness and communion, that our whole life is one long search for love. We all have experienced that during the pandemic. That was why people doing Zoom meetings, to because that was the only way they could be connected to one another, share the experience of love and togetherness with one another, even through technology. Rejection, we all know, hurts us so much because we desperately need to be connected, because it goes against the grain of who we really are, deep down. So we are most godly, most happy, most fulfilled, most complete when we too are in a loving relationship. When we live as the Trinity, of course, if you flip over to the other side, we are least ourselves, most unhappy, and least human when we are out of sync with the Trinity. Trinity shows that God, God's power is not domination. God's power is not. Threat or coercion. If the father does not dominate the son, and the son dominate not dominate the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit does not dominate the son and the father, then there is no domination. That is why the image that is presented, as when we celebrate the feast of the Holy Trinity. 
is a which is a circle, not a not a uh, uh, um, I forget the word now. Um, yeah, it's a circle, not a pyramid. That's the word. It's a circle. There is love. There is there is equality. So all divine power, my friends, is shared power. There is no seeking of power over Trinity. So th the Trinity says that God is community, and so we seek. The Trinity says that God is relationship, and so we search. The Trinity says that God is love, and so we love. So the next time somebody says to you, well, you're a Catholic, tell me something about, you believe in the Holy Trinity, tell me something about the Holy Trinity. If you do not want to get into a long philosophical or a theological discussion, just say, it's about three persons bound in a relationship of love. And it's about you. It's about me. Because you and I are the reflection of that relationship, which is the Father, which is the Son, which is the Holy Spirit. Friends, let us stand and together profess what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess in one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sisters and brothers, on this Trinity Sunday, let us offer our prayers to the Father through the Son in the unity of the Spirit. For the church called to live in communion, may we be eager for wisdom as the mystery of faith continues to unfold. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all peoples of the earth, for an end to all war, terror, racism, and gun violence, may we learn to live in peace and harmony with one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the stewards of the earth, for farmers and our parish gardeners, may they accept creation as a wondrous gift, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For married couples, for parents and children, for single persons, and for religious sisters and brothers, may they reflect the love of the Holy Trinity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all graduates, young and old, 
May they continue to grow in wisdom, knowledge, and perseverance, and they seek out new beginnings. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering members of our community, may their affliction lead to endurance, <clears throat> their endurance to virtue, and their virtue to hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the dead whose lives were sealed with the sign of the Trinity, especially John Jamnick, Jose Orellana Jr., and Walter Jonathan, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, our Father, from whom all good things flow, we thank you and praise you for the gift of creation. Answer our prayers and bring us hope through Christ your Son, who celebrates life with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to the God Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's church. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, we might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, who never cease to praise, to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, all the clergy, religious, and all your people everywhere. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep <clears throat> in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My friends, we gather tonight as a faith community who opens up our hearts to the Trinitarian presence and the Trinitarian love of God. So let us now call upon this God as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And my sisters and brothers and dear children, the peace of the Lord Jesus, who shares with us his love through the Father and the Spirit, be with you all. Let us know offer one another his peace. Speak with you.
My friends, this is Jesus, who together with the Father and the Holy Spirit invites us to take part in this meal. Blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, I only shall be healed.
Lord our God, let our reception of this sacrament and our worship of the ever blessed and undivided Trinity bring us wholeness of mind and body. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All are reminded to bring non-perishable food items to church next weekend in support of the St. Martin de Porres Food Pantry. We encourage all to bring up their food items during the offertory procession. And our closing hymn is at number 903, Baptized in Water. Together let us sing verses 1, 2, and 3 of 903. And dear friends, thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, it was good to be with you and celebrate the feast of the Holy Trinity. Our prayer for all of us is that we may always have the grace and the courage uh, and the strength to live in the loving relationship just as the Trinity does. Have a beautiful evening and a wonderful week ahead. The Lord be with you. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessings. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May he let his face shine upon you and show you his mercy. Amen. And may he turn his countenance towards you and give you his peace. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.